Welcome to Abby Clubhouse with a review of the SD Gundam World Hero Sergeant Verde Buster Gundam DX set which they've long teased since the very start of the series but we're only getting it now a few months later. Just like the Wukong DX set, this does have the entire Sergeant Verde Buster kit included inside and I've reviewed the standalone kit already so go have a look at that if you haven't and I won't be repeating parts from that video here. So a bit of history first about this kit. This DX set has a distant ancestor, which is this right here that I'm very proud to be able to show you in the flesh. This is the Ganso SD Gundam World Gun Armor and Captain Gundam set, and yes, they did exactly the same thing, packaging the Captain Gundam here and added the new gun armor to make this big bundle. And for those of you old enough to remember, yes, this is the same Captain Gundam design that was later reused and revived for the SD Gundam Force in the early 2000s. Now apologies here because I can't show you the kit side by side. My gun armor here is new and unbuilt and I didn't build it for this video, though I don't think anyone's going to lose any sleep over that. Unlike Sargent, the gun armor makes it very clear that we get Captain Gundam as part of the bundle, which I can only speculate why Bandai is so unclear about in the newer DX sets. Here is a look at some of the other characters in the Gearm slime, which more than likely you've never seen before. I mean, let me know if you're old enough to actually know any of them. But yes, for an SD Gundam character in the armed forces, it's not an entirely random thing that Sargent gets an exoskeleton combat support unit as an add-on for this DX set. In getting down to business, this DX set was released on October 16, 2021 and it sold for a price of 2,200 yen. The box art is illustrated by SK Yoshinobu, who we'll probably see for the entire series. A little different from Wukong is this time we do have a red little box here telling us that the Verde Buster team member isn't included inside, which at least helps us infer that we do get the sergeant. The box measures 31 by 19 by 8 centimeters, and it is exactly the same as the Wukong DX set. The short side of the box tells us that this is the 12th release in the series and everything else is the same as the front of the box. And the other side is exactly the same. The long side has all the studio shots of the different configurations of this kit. And the other side has info on the sergeant and it tells you to go watch the show online and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get the sergeant spread across 7 runners, and this is actually not 100% the same as the retail kit because this runner right here has the extra weapons added onto it, you know, the shield and everything, which we do get with the Verde Buster members. So this sergeant right here is some weird combination of the two kits, but other than this, the rest of the parts are exactly the same. For the exclusive parts to this DX set, we have 6 runners, which is a lot more than Wukong's DX set, but disappointingly we don't get any clear colors and even the lights on the flight unit are on this solid red runner, which is a big shame. For the stickers, we get the biggest sheet that we've seen on this channel so far, and I'll be skipping the locations of them because I like you guys better than to have you sit through all of this. Uh, as bad as this looks, you'll be surprised at the results a little bit later. For the instructions, we have info on the full package form at the very front here, which is kind of a silly sounding name. The backside has the names and the info on all the different parts, and they talk about the Verde Buster team members here even though they're released a little bit later than the set. There is a two-page comic, as we've come to expect from the series, that has really cool artwork, but generally doesn't really tell much of a story. The sheet folds out to two more colored pages with the assembly instructions, and then the black and white side of this giant sheet is all for assembly instructions too, as you'd expect. So first up we have the sergeant before any stickers are put on, and he really is exactly the same as the standalone kit. Wukong got an upgrade with his gold parts, but probably there wasn't anything to upgrade for the sergeant here. I mean, well there is, I would have liked it if they added clear blue parts to this, but Bandai wants us to instead buy the Verde Buster team members to get clear blue parts instead, those jerks. And here he is with the extra leg parts and some of the new weapons, and he looks like this without any stickers. It's all single colors, but it's really not that noticeable when it's all dark tones like this. With the flight unit, he looks like this, and now it's getting a little bit unsightly with solid colors and the green fans and the colors here are quite a mess, uh, but we will talk about this a little bit later with all the stickers on. And finally, here's the full package mode, which isn't quite as bad because it's mostly colored as it should be, and it adds that olive green and mild red to the mostly black sergeant. And speaking of which, let's put the stickers on. There may be a ton of stickers, but they really aren't used that much for the full package form, which is quite surprising. Uh, but wait, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's take a step back and see what they've added for the sergeant first. 
So here's the new sergeant next to the old standalone one, and it probably took you a second or two to see exactly what's different, and you're not crazy. You see, anything below the neck is exactly the same. The new stickers here are all on the head, like these red and blue lights on the blade antenna on the back here, and then these white stripes on the side of the head, and well, that's it. That's all they've added here, so it's like the opposite of the much better Wukong that we got in a DX set. What we get here is a pretty minimal upgrade. I mean, I guess I can understand it because there really isn't a ton of colors missing on the sergeant to begin with, so there isn't much room to improve him on a small budget anyway. If you have an extra sergeant like I do, one cool thing you can do is give him both pistols which lets him dish out twice as much violent justice all at once. To go back to the full package, we first need to install this giant backpack here on the back with some dangly bits that we have to ignore for now. And then the entire shoulder unit actually attaches directly onto that backpack so it isn't actually connected onto the sergeant in any way. On the sides are holes for the claw arm on this side and then the Gatling gun arm on the other side. And now we can attach that hanging ammo belt onto the gun. The rail guns clip into bars on the shoulder armor, and it is a little worrying if this joint may get a little bit loose after some play, uh, but mine is new so I'm not sure. Then lastly, we have these extra platforms for the feet which simply peg into holes on the bottom of the feet. So one of the best parts of this form is really how easy it is to install and how little fuss there is in the process. You can have this up in a minute and just take it off just as quickly when you're done with it, and that's really not something I expected for judging from how this kit looked. Something else you might not expect is that the sergeant's hands don't actually have anything to do with the armor at all, and they're free to use any other weapons that you like. That gives you more options for playing and displaying, but it also does make the Gatling gun and the claw feel a little bit disconnected and uninvolved. And speaking of the arms, the claw arm is connected on a ball joint so you can angle it around a little bit. And then the actual claw part can turn up this much, and it strangely goes down way further, and no I didn't put it on upside down or anything, it really is made like this. The claw themselves can be opened vertically, though the friction is really strong and they tend not to move smoothly in between. These black parts on the claw actually come off and you can reattach them on points further down the claw like this so they can reach quite a bit outwards, so this arm really isn't just a static thing. On the other side we have the Gatling gun mounted onto the other arm, and there is that same ball joint on this side as well so it moves just the same. The Gatling gun itself can swivel on a peg a little bit more than you might think even though there is that ammo belt attached to it. But the belt does limit the overall range of movements that you can have with the arm, which would be much better otherwise without it. At the other end of the belt is the ammo drum, which can be removed from the backpack like this, and it's a static detail with no moving parts. The belt itself is all hard plastic, and it sits on a ball joint on this end at the ammo drum, and it can move around like this. The middle here has a joint added to it, kind of in a brute force way to let you twist the belt, even though it makes no sense when it turns like this. And there's that big tumor added to the other side here. It's a necessary evil for this stiff belt, even though it really doesn't look very good. If I were a kid, I'm pretty sure I'd just do this and yeet the belt and let the Gatling gun move freely like this and just make full use of the joints here. For the railguns, they're really long and intimidating and they're supposed to be the focus of this whole set of armor, but if you move them down from this highest point right here, this is as far as they go. From the side we get a better idea of just how narrow that drop is with just a sliver of an angle between the highest point and the lowest and it's really not enough. I bet you can't easily tell if the guns are up or down at all, which is pretty lame when they're supposed to be the main weapons here. The gun itself looks like this with a lot of details on it, and the barrel has holes all along its length like that. It's two pieces sandwiched together so there aren't any hollow spaces anywhere, but otherwise nothing on this moves. These long spines along the top and the bottom are both done with stickers which are quite challenging for younger fans and they're probably gonna need someone to help them out with this. And while the guns may not move a whole lot, the mechanical details here are actually quite good where the hole in the joint is never exposed when you move the gun. The ankles here can swing down like this to anchor the feet down for firing the railguns. It's a simple addition that gives you more to do on a kit that otherwise can't move a ton. It's a small shame that the backside of these heel anchors are hollow like this. On the shoulder armor we have these red panels which are actually missile pots. The bottom door can swing open like this, and then the top door can be pulled out and then put back into an open position like this. 
you'll immediately notice that the missiles on the inside here are all covered with stickers and these are all molded underneath, even though I forgot to get some footage of it. The open doors is such a fun gimmick to have, but the stickers really sour that reveal underneath. They're kind of hard to defend and these stickers really hurt the kit way more than they add to it, so this is the clear cut bad design. Now, nagging issues like that and the slightly ugly ammo belt on a Gatling gun aside, there is actually quite a lot to play with on the full package form here, it, the strangest of which are the rail guns which don't point forward, which is the one thing we kind of want them to do. But otherwise, it's hard to be too harsh on the kit because you can actually play with the kit and it's still a lot of fun, which is really not quite the case with Wukong's DX set. The next combination here is the aerial unit, which we can change into by taking off the foot platforms here first, and then taking off the arms on each of the sides. Then the rail guns also need to come off, giving us just the bare shoulder armor that's still attached like this. These black caps here will go onto the holes that's left behind by the rail gun, and they cover it up really nicely. Then we'll attach the big fans onto the holes where the arms used to plug into, and that's all there is to it to switch over to the aerial unit. So the elephant in the room here is that the colors here are just all wrong, and I'm not just talking about the lights up top. If you look at the artwork, the entire aerial unit is supposed to be black and blue, which is really not at all what we've got here. I know the kid can't just magically change his colors, but it's just as true that Bandai who designed this themselves put themselves into this no-win situation here. They could have designed this in any other way which wouldn't have this problem, but their own decisions gave us this green aerial unit with a lot of stickers, but it's just still not at all correct in colors. And when I say a lot of stickers, I do mean lots, with the fan unit here having metallic red stickers on top of the red plastic, and then all of these blue stickers on the body of the fan making a feeble attempt to course correct, then it really is a bit of a mess. I mean, how strange is it to have this gigantic sticker sheet with so many stickers, and then, after making such a big compromise, we still have this ugly patchwork of green and white and blue? I mean, we do get some color separation like the red arms that hold up the lights on top, but it's not the right color that we need for this part right here. I'll raise one more problem and then we're gonna stop picking on this form. If you look at the lights from the top here, the red stickers aren't able to cover those stair steps of the geometry here, which if we bring in the blue one, it looks really half-baked, which we know these kids aren't afraid to have us do crazy wraparound stickers in other places, so why is it left bare right here like this? So overall, it's just really inconsistent on top of being really troublesome. Okay, so the fans can swivel along a peg here to go front and back like this. And even though the top looks like it can turn, there's actually a notch so that this part here is fixed in place. I mean, not that you need to rotate these anyway. Colors aside, this is ultimately an interesting addition, because one of my complaints for the sergeant was that because what you get in the box is nice and well, but the potential of the kit is locked away in other kits. And you're gonna want the upcoming expansion set for the giant cannons to make up for his lack of firepower. By himself, there's not a ton to play with outside of the box, and something like this adds so much context to the sort of roles he can play beyond just being an officer with a single gun. Now it is also kind of lame that you only have one set of the shoulder armor, so that means you can only make either the full package or the aerial unit. So one box of these kits can only dress up the sergeant or a team member in one of these forms. It's very wasteful for the parts that go unused, and it's even more wasteful that now we have to buy an entire second box if we want the full package and the aerial unit, and then what are we gonna do with the second sergeant that we get? But let's get back on track, because there's still a little bit more that we get in the box. These leg units are independent of the full package and the aerial unit parts, so to their great credit, these do work all on their own. They do have a few stickers on them, so they try to be color accurate, though these have the same patchy look of the aerial unit that looks a little bit unfinished. The back wheels here in particular have these nasty stickers that, well, at first glance looks quite good here, right? But if you make the mistake like I did of pressing them down into the crevasse, you get this veiny, wrinkly mess like this other one here, and I didn't even fully push the sticker down once I noticed that it got all wrinkly. It's probably best to cut the sticker along the black lines here to separate the gray part from the blue, but points off to the stickers that just let them not work out of the box like this. 
otherwise the leg units are static decorations that you can easily slip onto the feet. I mean, imperfect as they are, I think it's better to have them in the box than to not have them, and ultimately they add more value than they detract, and they are totally separate from the full package and the aerial unit parts, so, you know, if worst comes to worst, you can just not use them at all. For the new weapons, we get this big riot shield here that's in all black and surprisingly none of the many stickers on that big sticker sheet go onto this. It's a fairly regular shield, with some decorations on the backside though it's nothing super fancy. An interesting little function here is that you can pull off the handle like this, and then you can plug it back vertically to give you more flexibility when holding the shield. This plus shaped hole setup is something I haven't seen before. Next we have the small handgun here, with an emphasis on small. It has all the expected details on this side of the gun, and it does have a nice boxy shape, but the other side is just savagely hollowed out, and this is brutal for any builder who wants to fill this in because they have to recreate all that surface detail. Next to the sergeant's gun, we get a better idea of just how comically small this pistol is. It's a fine idea to have the other members use a small gun, but in their hands, it is a little hard to take this too seriously. It's shaped like a much bigger gun, so really this is just simply in the wrong size. Lastly, we have the baton, which from the pre-production renders, this really looked like it was gonna be clear. I mean, look at this. But no, this is actually a solid black piece and there isn't even a sticker. Now, to be honest, the weapon itself isn't too far from the norm of the series where melee weapons like swords never get any stickers anyway. Uh, but the problem is that Bandai was perfectly happy letting us think that this was going to be better than what it comes out to be. The one I have here is a little bit curved, but this is just a fluke of the runner that I happen to get, and they're probably going to be nice and straight on yours if you buy one of these kits. The baton does fit very nicely into the hand, and unlike the pistol, this is nice and long and big, and Sergeant really does need more weapons to bulk up his arsenal beyond his default gun. For size comparisons, here's the SD Cross Silhouette RX-78. And then, here's the Legends BB Zacto. It's probably to no one's surprise that the full package is way taller and bulkier than the other two standard SD kits. It's kind of rare to get big SD kits nowadays, so the sergeant in this form would be really nice to have so that you can break up the monotony of an SD Gundam shelf display. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai SD Gundam World Heroes Sergeant Verde Buster DX set. Number 1, it has great playability. SD Gundam World Heroes kits can sometimes forget that they are supposed to be for younger fans and they are supposed to be played with to some degree. And the better kits of the series like Sasuke keeps that in mind while still looking great. Now I don't think I'd say this DX set looks quite as great as Sasuke overall with some really sloppy stickers, but there's still no denying that there is a lot to play with here in the box. The full package is full of functional panels and those arms on the side can get quite a lot of action, and you get two alternate configurations along with new weapons that make Sergeant more complete. If we don't bash the kit too much for how it looks in some places, like those missile pods, then there is a lot here to enjoy for younger fans. And number 2, Sergeant makes this set harder to buy. So with the parts that we get right here, it's easy to think of a situation where we do want a second set to have both the full package and the aerial unit installed individually at the same time. But even in the most ideal case, a person will only need Sergeant the first time they buy this. Imagine how much simpler this would be if it was a purchasing decision if they swapped out Sergeant for a team member. It's very hard to imagine too many flaws in such a product unless you're Bandai and people won't be forced into redundant purchases if they did that. So that's why they didn't do it. And number 3, this is sticker heavy but it's still incomplete. With the massive sheet of stickers, you'd think at the very least we'd get a well-colored kit out of it, but the flight unit is just so far from the intended colors that in the end we just get something that's both wrong colored and it's just frantically band-aided all over with stickers. The wheel add-ons have that half-hearted wrinkly stickers on the wheel too, where they just gave up and just left it like this. So if all of this came with a reasonable payoff, I'd be more forgiving. But as it stands, this is an unusually high number of stickers, even for World Heroes kits, and they just don't justify themselves very well. So that's a review of the Sergeant's DX set, rounding out the pair of DX set that is planned for the World Heroes line. 
I kind of hope that Bandai will at least consider making these less wasteful and redundant to buy in the future, but the suspicion is that the wastefulness isn't an oversight but is exactly what Bandai wants. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse. And I'll see you next time.